thank you very much everyone for joining me today. Um, as Adele mentioned, uh, we did a project together with DataCamp and I would like to share some best practices and some organizational tips that we have learned. Um, so uh, my name is Hannah Goebbels. I'm uh, currently a project leader at Porsche, um, but I did this project under my responsibilities at Volkswagen. Um, yeah. Today we will be addressing why you should be organizing or you can organize an internal data science bootcamp. Then I will share the five best practices uh, of what we learned. Um, I will also talk about a conclusion and the next steps. Uh, and then I'm very happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, so why should uh, you organize an internal data science bootcamp? So um, one of the advantages that we had when we organized the bootcamp was um, that we were able to get an understanding of the skill that is currently present in our organization or in our department. Um, and I can honestly say that there was no other moment that we could have stand still uh, and could have assessed what we already have and where our track into the transformation needs to lead to. So um, the advantage of, or of organizing this bootcamp gave us the opportunity to, to really picture what is already in the organization. Um, it also gave us the opportunity to select which tools we would like to focus on, which processes needed to change uh, in order to um, have um, digital transformation. Um, then the second thing is um, cross-functional collaboration. So uh, bring, organizing a bootcamp brings also a lot of different people together. Um, this definitely um, creates new relationships and no, new relationships create new ideas um, because people are engaging with each other uh, and yeah, uh, come up with uh, problem solving skills um, during uh, that bootcamp itself. Um, then a third point is promoting data literacy. I think we are all here because we know that data is um, uh, important and we are all thrown away by uh, how data can um, help us with um, uh, selling products or um, making business processes more efficient. So um, it was also time for us to jump on the train and uh, um, by organizing this data science bootcamp, you definitely promote data literacy within your company. Um, then the next point is empowering employees. So um, by taking away the fear of, of, of learning about this skill. Um, so by organizing the coding bootcamp, we took that a little bit away. We put everyone in the same situation um, and we made sure that everyone was comfortable in the situation and was able to exchange ideas on how the skill could be implemented in their daily life uh, or for their daily tasks. Um, and why not do it all in a team? Um, it also enforces you to, to start the learning journey because you're not alone. You're in it with a whole whole bunch of people, actually. Um, then one more point um, is the problem solving. So when we organized this coding bootcamp, we definitely saw that people were engaging with each other, discussing business problems. And by acquiring new skills, they found a new way of uh, solving these business problems. Um, and then, yeah, they they embark together on this um, cultural transformation journey, um, which is also an added value of, of the of the bootcamp. And then as a last point, um, I put cost effectiveness. Um, for us, it was uh, definitely uh, important to gather everyone in one space. Um, and that brought uh, with it that we only had to organize um, one training for everyone instead of hiring several external trainings. Uh, trainers and, and, and parties to, to set it up in different locations. So um, this was definitely more cost effective from our part. Um, then before I go into the five best practices, I would like to also give you a little bit more insight on what we actually did uh, within Volkswagen. I think it's very important for you to understand also uh, why we came to the next points. Um, so you'll be probably hearing me talk about coding bootcamp. Um, so uh, it was definitely decided in, uh, centrally that we would focus on um, upscaling our people in coding. Um, and as a language, we used Python uh, because Python is actually a universal coding language that can be used for different um, topics and different areas within the business. 
So um, as part of the digitalization strategy within um, the internal audit department, uh, we decided that uh, there were several initiatives and that one of them would be organizing a Python coding bootcamp. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, I'm from the internal audit department. Um, so our focus audience was auditors and uh, investigators. So we had people um, from different areas. We have technical auditors, commercial auditors, and uh, fraud in uh, investigators or fraud examiners. And um, we actually asked them um, who would like to participate uh, voluntarily uh, in, in this coding bootcamp. And as you see, we have quite a lot of brands. So we had around 850 people that we requested um, uh, to participate in. And I can very proudly say that around 250 people um, came from all around the world uh, to participate in our coding bootcamp. Um, we organized it in Berlin as a central location because we really had people flying in from different locations. Um, not only uh, Berlin because it's very central, but also because of its technological background. And currently a lot of startups are um, being formed there. Um, I would also like to shout out to my amazing organization team. Uh, we were four people, Dominic Mohit, Julia. Um, I'm really grateful to have been doing this project with you. Uh, we started our journey in February 2023, and we successfully ended the coding bootcamp um, in September 2023, so a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, as mentioned, the objective of our coding bootcamp was actually to kickstart the learning experience uh, of internal audit in data science by uh, using Python. So let's dive into these five best practices. Um, so uh, the five things that I would like to focus on are participants, management, building a community, making it a very personalized experience for everyone, and the location. So when we talk about the participants, um, I would like to focus more on the tailored experience uh, and the tailoring uh, on the skills that are present. So as I mentioned in my introduction, um, we have a lot of different profiles uh, in our internal audit department. And that means that they also differently react on change. Um, so when we were talking about the transformation uh, within our department, we got also a lot of different reactions to that. So um, one thing that we wanted to make sure of is that when we organize this coding bootcamp, it needs to make everyone feel comfortable. So someone that is beginning to code uh, until an expert that is already very fluent in, in Python. So that's why um, we uh, organized uh, for them to do an assessment um, and not one assessment, actually three assessments. And these assessments would give us a better understanding on how we could um, organize our uh, bootcamp. So we had an assessment, of course, on their Python skills, uh, but then we had assessments on if they understood data and if they can interpret data. Uh, and then another assessment about analytical thinking. And um, because of that, we could form groups of like-minded and, and uh, people with the same skills uh, because there's nothing as frustrating as sitting next to someone that is completely uh, understanding everything and you're just sitting there trying to understand what the code is that you've just created. So um, we created groups based on Python skill level and then based on level of understanding of data uh, and analytical thinking. Um, and we didn't name them beginner group one or intermediate group one. We actually gave them uh, Python library names um, just so that they wouldn't be confronted with their level as well. Um, so then the, the learning was tailored based on their skill. So we could adapt a little bit the speed uh, within this one week. Um, and we could also um, focus on uh, people en engaging with each other and exchanging experience with each other um, because they felt more connected uh, being in the same area of expertise uh, and having the same level of understanding. Okay, then the second uh, point is engaging management. Um, it was very important for us to make them also a core audience of this bootcamp. So there are a couple of aspects that um, are important uh, to increase the engagement of uh, management. So uh, we wanted to increase the participation. We wanted to have a tailored agenda for them. Uh, we wanted to also have them connect with some leaders. And then we wanted to um, 
yeah, uh, promote a little bit an open discussion um, so that they could also uh, align a little bit between each other um, what the next steps would be for our department. So when we talk about the uh, learning participation, um, uh, we wanted to make sure that um, a big part of the participants within our boot camp was uh, from management. Um, and in order to do that, we didn't give them a complete week um, or, or we didn't give them a program for the, the whole five days like the other participants, but we shortened it to three days so that they could also focus on other topics um, in the rest of the week. Um, then um, our top management was actually an incredible supporter of this initiative. So uh, that definitely helped us to increase the participation rate within um, our management. Um, then before we started uh, planning or when we started planning the, the, the coding bootcamp, we also had a couple of alignment and communications uh, with the management uh, to request their input. And that gave us an opportunity to also um, make sure that we focused on some topics that were uh, requested by them. Um, and then um, at the end, before we had the, 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 the management bootcamp, we aligned this planning with them to make sure that it was up to everyone's expectations. And uh, the result was that actually from the 250 uh, participants in total, one fifth uh, came from management. So that definitely shows towards the rest of the participants how well and engaged um, our management uh, is and how they are standing behind this initiative. Okay, then, um, so we tailored their, uh, their experience, as I mentioned. Um, we um, had this three-day agenda for them. And as you can see, it wasn't ab only about Python. Uh, we made sure that we involved and included some data science and machine learning topics. Um, and um, these topics came actually um, forward because we also have, um, currently we have 15 uh, data scientists already working in the internal audit department. Uh, and we asked them actually where there are some trigger points or some pain points where we need to focus on. Um, and this helped us then also decide which topics definitely needed to be uh, included uh, within the management bootcamp. So, uh, again, this this internal exchange, um, not only with the management that would participate, but also involving your um, the employees under that um, in what we need to expose our management to was a key factor for us to decide which uh, agenda we wanted to uh, present to them. Um, and then, as you can see, there's uh, two keynote speeches, which I will come to later, and um, also an internal knowledge knowledge exchange. So. As I mentioned, we already have 15 data scientists working in the department. Um, they're already performing audits uh, with the use of data science techniques. Um, and it was also very important that they would have their floor to present how it changed their um, uh, way of working. So we had two of them uh, present towards our management and compare actually how a daily um, or uh, how their daily tasks uh, compared to a normal audit, uh, auditor differentiated. So it was very interesting for, uh, for the management to see that um, when you start including data science in your um, daily tasks, that they, this would also mean that certain things need to change within the way of working. So as I mentioned, there were also two keynotes. Um, and I've already heard that Emily is uh, present in the call. Um, so we had one keynote speaker, which was Marcella Schrank from Allianz. Um, we strategically chose her because uh, she works at Allianz, which is also a German global player. Uh, and because um, she has created, um, together with her team, an analytics academy. Um, in the organization, um, the, her focus uh, or the focus of her keynote was to exchange um, uh, the, the challenges that she had and, and the opportunities that she took in order to upscale uh, the people in into the topics of data science. Um, and then um, we had Emily Hayward uh, from CBRE speak. Um, she's a transformation manager, and um, uh, we actually had two keynote speeches from her. So one was um, towards the participants, and um, it was actually a very, like, a very interesting speech because at the end of her keynote, she asked all the participants in order for them to feel comfortable in this transformation and in this change, what what would they need? 
um, and it definitely caused um, some reactions and, and, and definitely people started uh, mentioning what they would like to, to see and what they would like to have um, from management um, in order to go through the, the transformation process. And then strategically, we um, had Emily do another keynote speech, but in front of our management. Um, and uh, she took the, the points that um, were mentioned uh, by the participants and showed them to our management. And it had such a remarkable impact that I really have to mention it here um, because it comes to my next point, which is the open discussion. So at the end of um, the day, which was filled with uh, Emily's keynote speech and the exchange of um, the Volkswagen data scientist, I saw some of the top management um, discussing in a corner uh, how they would like to start the next steps. And, and that's definitely kind of an effect that you would like to see when you organize these kinds of, uh, of boot camps. So uh, not only during uh, or at the end of, of Emily's keynote, uh, there was a discussion, but also afterwards, it definitely opened uh, a conversation that um, uh, we were very happy to, to engage in. Okay, then the, the third point is uh, building a community. So we already put people um, in the same spot um, for one week. So uh, people were a, put in the same situation and that creates some kind of feeling of togetherness and, and it motivates um, people to continue because when you're in a group, you can motivate each other a little bit. So looking at the locations that we had, um, it was this community building that was also a key aspect um, of, of our, our boot camp. So um, we are spread all over the world and um, the exchange is very limited when you're in different locations. So having this boot camp in a central location and having all these participants um, engage with each other, that was definitely something that we wanted to trigger. So um, they, everyone got the mission to spread the news, to, to go back to, to their hometowns and, and to um, maybe encourage other people to, to embark on this journey. Um, so that's the, that's the point that, that was um, one of the biggest added, added values for us uh, by having this in a central location and then making sure that people would spread it uh, uh, all over the world actually. Um, and then afterwards, like if you have a community and you know the people that sat next to you in the training, you're also more likely to um, get in touch with them if you have questions or you have problems or you have great ideas that you want to work together on. So we wanted to create a bond um, and we wanted people to know uh, the other person sitting next to them um, uh, when they would go back home. Then the fourth point is um, make it personalized. So um, as I said, you can like learn a skill, um, you can follow a training, but that doesn't mean that you know how to apply it in your uh, daily work. So it, we wanted to customize the learning journey of internal audit as much as possible. And um, we exposed uh, all the participants to coding. We exposed our management to data science terms and, and, and how things can be implemented. But the best thing to do was um, to create real life projects. So what we did together with Data Camp, um, we um, recreated data that was similar to what we had uh, in the company and we created an audit. So um, an audit works in that way that you check a process and then operationally you see if the process is lived. By data, uh, with the use of data, you can also check this. So instead of doing sample testing, we asked all the participants to perform a, da a, a data analysis audit. Um, and we, uh, we, we formed the questions in that way that with the, t with the skills that they used through, during the week, they could um, apply it on the data that we gave them and they could answer audit related questions. So um, we had a couple of um, real life use cases um, we had a warranty use case for our commercial auditors. We had a threaded connections use case for our technical auditors. And then for our experts, we even had a text and concept analysis um, for fraud detection. Um, and I think 
this was really the cherry on the top for me because um, we could show them uh, what they that that what they had learned during that week, how they could use it in their audits, and um, the biggest point here was that at the end of the of the coding bootcamp, we asked a couple of them to present what they had learned with this use case uh, in front of our management, so that um, also the management could see that this one week uh, definitely had had their impact um, on our employees, and they could see. Um, if they now have to go back and do an audit, which are the things that a, that someone that is a beginner could do and someone that is an intermediate and, and are experts, what they are actually capable of doing. Then the last point, location, location, location. Uh, it cannot, it, it is actually a very important point uh, to make uh, your whole bootcamp succeed. So um, as I mentioned, we wanted a very tailored and very customized experience and very personal. So we needed a location that could give us the room to have a classroom set up, but that also had the room to have uh, keynotes in bigger groups. Um, so we found a location in Berlin uh, that um, gave us uh, the room to have uh, groups of 25 people, um, but that also could handle a, a group of 200 people. And one other important thing between the sessions, we also had um, networking uh, events or networking talks. Um, and that was also an important part that, uh, that this hotel could offer. Um, of course, good food makes people more uh, engaged and, and, and motivated to, to continue their learning journey. Um, and then one evening on Thursday evening, we also had a get together, an event. Um, uh, it was actually quite funny because we asked some of the data scientists what their favorite activity would be. Uh, and we got as an answer, beer and arcade. So. They said what we had to do and we listened. So we got uh, a venue that has arcade games, but also duck pin bowling. And um, we saw the whole community aspect again being built up. Yeah, conclusion. Um, so you have done your bootcamp and what now? So there is a couple of things that um, I think you need to be ready for uh, when you're finished with your bootcamp because um, Co learning how to code in one week is impossible. Uh, it, it's uh, the start of a journey and it's the start of a long journey. So uh, be ready with your next steps. Um, Data Camp offers the, uh, the, the possibility to set up customized tracks um, to make sure that there are tracks ready um, from, so that, that people that finished at a certain point can continue where they left off. Um, so definitely be ready uh, with these steps before the end of your bootcamp. Then um, again, focus on the community, um, organize community meetings, have people discuss uh, business, business problems, make them even come up with uh, innovative ideas, um, maybe even have people present how they use their skills that they acquired uh, during the bootcamp and in, in, in one of their daily tasks. Um, that's definitely a point that I think is uh, relevant to keep people motivated. Um, then the third point is introduce KPIs. Um, so uh, the um, it's definitely it's important for management to be able to track the, the progress of the transition and um, KPIs are, are the key factor that can help with that. So um, one of the things that, that uh, we are currently looking into is um, how many audits are being done with the use of data scientists, data science, um, and try to improve that number so that they also have a kind of like a, 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 a need to uh, continue their learning journey um, and track these KPIs, then also closely report them to management so they see the impact uh, of the learning journey. Um, then frequent communication. Uh, this can be about new tracks coming up in data camp. This can be about uh, community meetings, about how far are we in our KPIs, uh, or maybe even about a next upcoming bootcamp. Um, and then as a last point, I would say, um, motivate your employees to keep learning. Um, as I said, uh, learning how to code is not possible in one week. So it's definitely necessary for them to keep um, 
uh, learning uh, to keep uh, on to stay on track with their learning experience and uh, also here i think data camp uh, offers kind of like a gamification um, platform where you can you uh, you can earn experience points you can even get certified as a data scientist and these are all motivational factors um, that can help the employees to continue their learning journey yeah so th that was it from my side uh, thank you very much for uh, being part of this and i'm very happy to answer any questions uh, you might have now that was awesome, Hannah. I really, really appreciated that presentation. So before we start taking questions from the audience, everyone do make sure to ask as many questions as you want and as you can. We have a bit of time. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions myself. Uh, so uh, maybe a lot of folks here are starting off to think about, you know, how do I get started with a boot camp? How do I, uh, uh, how do I like scale this within my own organization? What would be your advice of where to get started? What are the groups that you should target for this boot camp? Like, how would you maybe? Uh, what would be your advice of who to target for for a boot camp? Uh, um, yeah. So I I think if if you look at your organization, there are always pioneers. So people that want to um, start this journey and that want to uh, start engaging and learning a new skill. So I would definitely mm -hmm. start with those um, because they can be again, the spreader of the news, right? They can motivate others to also contribute and to also start learning uh, a new skill. And then as a second um, uh, participant, or I would say, uh, engage, make your data, sci uh, data scientists engage. Um, they are the experts. They, they mm -hmm. can actually show off a little bit their skills to impress other people. Um, so I would say, they can also definitely create some kind of a motivational factor for people on to how to continue their their learning journey. Okay, that's great. And then uh, another question I had here was, you know, you mentioned near the end that you know what next after the uh, the boot camp, and one thing was you know organize community meetings, right, and like drive a community feeling. Maybe walk me through what does that look like in practice? How often do you do it? What would you recommend others adopt here? Yeah, so so community meetings is actually nothing nothing new for us. Uh, we have already set up certain communities that come uh, together on a frequent basis. It really depends on 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 the on the topic. Um, so mm -hmm. these community meetings are actually there for people to share their experience. So if there is a certain topic that they um, they have uh, experienced, what and and they want to share it with everyone these are the times that they are being uh, presented so this can really depend on if we would uh, we for certain topics we would do it on a quarterly basis um for data science it it really depends uh, on who raises their hand uh, and wants to present what they have been working on um so I would just say uh, at least have a minimum frequency ready and uh, depending on the need uh, and the demand, um, increase it as much as possible. You can never have too many exchanges because uh, they are very motivational. Yeah, I can imagine. And it really helps in, uh, you know, uh, creating connections and sharing learnings. And, you know, speaking of learning, you mentioned here, you know, uh, ways of keeping people engaged and like mentioning KPIs. So I'm going to break down this question actually into two. Uh, maybe what are the main KPIs that you're looking at in terms of uh, measuring the learning uh, program? And, um, and yeah, walk me through kind of how you've approached, uh, you know, being quantitative on measuring the outcomes from the learning program. Yeah, it, it, in general, it's very hard, um, I would say, to put KPIs on it. So, so um, to to give a couple of examples where it's possible, but um, also here we are still um, under discussion and under construction, let's say. Um, so we, as I said, we are trying to increase the amount of audits where uh, data science techniques are being used, um, trying to increase the amount of people that, uh, that have the skills uh, of a data scientist. Um, these are kind of things that you can uh, quantitatively um, uh, um, check, uh, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh, but then there's also things like um, we want to check if it's possible to give people certain experience points, not only mm -hmm. with the data camp platform, but saying like, uh, okay, this is now an expert. Uh, we have uh, our extremely mm -hmm. expert 
uh, expert data scientists, they their learning journey might not be that far or not not long anymore. So we wanted to motivate them another way, so they could do like consulting projects or they could um, uh, they could uh, contribute in an audit, um, and and these things can then also be quantified for the individual himself, um, where we would then um, reward uh, the people that have contributed the most. Um, and this way we could see who is actually um, a good pioneer to then mm -hmm. um, promote the uh, the next steps. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned here is something, you know, keeping people engaged, you know, with uh, celebrating the wins and celebrating the pioneers. How important is it to engage leadership here to, uh, to partake in the celebration and lead by example here? Because, you know, I I've seen the Volkswagen leadership, definitely something, you know, an example to, to follow. So I'd love... I'd love to kind of, if you expand on that, because that's a very important aspect of the formula. Yeah, so so like I said, we had 250 people that participated and it, I, I honestly believe that this is all because of the support that we got from our management. So mm -hmm. um, our management was um, uh, very interested in the topic and uh, they're sh showing that they were going to participate uh, with such a big amount of people uh, definitely triggered the employees to also take part in this. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if they are there and they keep an eye on things, then you want to be there, right? Because you want to impress the boss. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Impressing the boss is very important. I think this is also segues to a question that we have here from, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Janos Ksongor. What were some of the key arguments that you made in getting the event and securing the budget? Because that's securing the budget is a big, big one. So yeah, how have you approached that? Um, so um, as I think as um, the transformation is necessary at this point in time, a, a company uh, like Volkswagen and then especially the internal audit department couldn't lag behind, right? So we mm -hmm. see everywhere transformation projects popping up within the company uh, and then having audit, uh, perform audits the way they did uh, 20 years ago. That was definitely an argument that we used in order to start this transition. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, regarding the budget, um, uh, I think it was important for us that we uh, put everyone in the same situation from the beginning um, and that we first evaluated where we were before we started this journey. So um, by centralizing the whole thing for not only for, for Germany, but also for the whole world, uh, it, it definitely was a trigger to, to get the budget. Mm-hmm. That's really great. Definitely, like risk of ignoring, risk of ignoring is is a big uh, <laughs> driver for ROI here. As another t uh, type of ROI. Uh, yeah. And then um, one question here that we're getting that I'm not able to share on the screen is um, maybe how did you work on making sure that the case studies or kind of the coding problems are relevant to you know real world problems that you would work on, uh, right? So how did you make sure that there are real world business problems like weaved in into the curriculum? So um, w one important thing to mention is that it, it, it's not yet possible to perform data analysis on every single audit. So we definitely, mm -hmm. before we selected our cases, we made a list of which use cases uh, can we use for this specific bootcamp. And, and then we started selecting, okay, what would be relevant for, for example, a commercial auditor uh, to be delved into? Because uh, the topics can be like, there's, you can audit anything, uh, but we had such a wide variety of profiles in, for example, the commercial audit department that we wanted to take a topic that they would be dealing with within their audit career. Um, so this is how we, we selected the current uh, custom uh, projects, but there are definitely some still in the pipeline. I know. So yeah, a hundred percent. And then uh, another question here is uh, maybe how have you approached after that maintaining this like culture of continuous learning after the you know the bootcamp was done? Because what you to want to avoid here is that you know people are excited and then nothing happens afterwards. So what what how do you make sure that people are following up on on the on the learning program? Yeah, so there, there, there are a couple of things as I, as I mentioned also during the presentation. So, so be ready for those next steps. Um, mm -hmm. Have your tools ready. Uh, make sure that people can use them. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, I'm not part anymore of Volkswagen Group, but I do mm -hmm. know that my, uh, my 
the next person that took over for me is uh, very um, eager uh, uh, into building new tracks. Uh, I know that there's a lot of communication uh, about it within uh, within our company uh, uh, to engage people, to, to motivate them to keep going. So uh, we are building custom tracks. Uh, we are mm -hmm. uh, working on, on custom projects so that they could uh, practice their skills again on a new uh, data set. Um, so I would say that these are the things. So have your tools ready, um, have your platform, your learning platform ready and build in some business cases that they would feel familiar with. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of questions here that I see as well. So we do have a bit of time. So everyone do make sure to ask questions if you have any questions. Uh, maybe what are some of the challenges you faced, Hannah, at the beginning when launching the bootcamp? And uh, kind of walk me through how you or overcame these challenges. So a question from Ava. Um, so uh, one of the challenges uh, was definitely making sure that uh, it was, uh, so the bootcamp was uh, uh, tackling the majority of the needs of the people but i can honestly say when we started asking for input it was so overwhelming uh, that we had to start selecting so this was definitely a challenge um like do do we focus on one coding language or do we start first start with um training people in in, in data understanding mm -hmm. data uh, so these were these were the biggest challenges and then making sure that whenever someone starts this journey that they keep engaged so um, we wanted to customize it to everyone's need uh, but unfortunately there we had to be very uh, a, a little bit selective yeah okay great and then one final question here i see as well so i'm just going through here um da -da -da. Yeah, maybe there's an additional question, kind of slightly similar to what I've asked before as well. Like, what roles or functions within the organization do you think benefits the most from uh, attending a boot camp? Like, who would you first choose? Well, um, if I have to pick, I would say management because uh, mm -hmm. they are the drivers of the transformation. So they need to understand uh, what is out there. They need to understand um, where uh, at the moment the, the possibility is to transform. Um, so um, it was important to have them engaged. But then again, um, your employees are the one executing um, the analytics. So th they definitely need to gain the skill, uh, but uh, for in order for your organization to understand where you are right now, your management needs to understand what what is out there uh, and, and how everything can be implemented in your business setting. Okay, that's great. Definitely engage management first because that will drive a lot of excitement down yes. the line. People want to impress the boss always. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think this wraps it up from my side. I don't see any additional questions. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who joined us today for this webinar. Also, a huge thank you to Hannah for joining us and telling us the story about the data science bootcamp at uh, Volkswagen. Everyone do give her uh, a shout out on LinkedIn if you enjoyed the show. And then uh, if you're interested in having a similar uh, bootcamp within your organization, do reach out to us. You know where to find us. I uh, want to say again, huge thank you, everyone, for joining uh, today's webinar. And huge thank you to Hannah. Thank you very much for having me.